Okay, so for those of you who don't know, which is pretty much everyone watching, I have had an urge to review more anime series and movies for my channels, and this one follower on Twitter recommended the series Boogie Pop Phantom, so I figured, why not? I'll start with that. And if there are any recommendations for any series or movies or anime related that you want me to check out and possibly review, just leave a comment in the, in the comments below, or feel free to mention it to me on Facebook or Twitter. Now, without further ado, let's get started. So in Boogie Pop Phantom, a strange beam of light appears in this one city in Japan, and a month later, high school students begin to disappear, and many people believe that these students are being hunted down by Boogie Pop, who is essentially the personification of death. And over the course of 12 episodes, we see from multiple different viewpoints and perspectives why Boogie Pop is after these particular students. One of the things that really stands out about Boogie Pop Phantom in particular is its animation. The animation style is a style called vignetting, where each shot is either very reduced brightness or very reduced saturation in order to make it stand out and give much more focus on a particular character. And it really fits the atmosphere where the characters feel as if nothing is as it seems anymore. And when there's a moment of suspense or some unsettling imagery in the shot, these scenarios feel and look as if they're much more impactful. Because the animation feels very surreal, they're portrayed from the characters' perspectives, so that whenever someone's hallucinating or being chased, you really feel as if you're witnessing something very bizarre and wondering, is this really happening the whole time? And the score is also very unique in that there's a lot of heavy breathing and use of sonic pulses in order to build up tension until the big payoff, which for the most part pays off very nicely in my opinion. What each character has in common in this show is that they are all dealing with a major life change. As you grow older, school can get very intimidating for some people because of expectations to get good grades, it's a lot harder to make friends, and relations with parents can change due to so many expectations of what to do when you grow up. And all these characters face these problems, and each of them look for a way of escapism rather than actually confronting their fears heads on. My favorites include this one guy named Yoji, who simultaneously has a relationship with a made-up woman he created on a computer, and he begins to confuse her for a new female co-worker at the restaurant that he works at. And because it's all from his perspective, we can't really tell what's real or what's not, and we really buy the fact that he's losing touch with reality. And another favorite of mine includes a man who can literally feed off of people's pain, and he does so not really because he cares about them, but because he just wants a purpose in life. And I won't spoil how he's able to do this, because it's actually very clever, and it ties into the show's themes very nicely. Now, the narrative may throw some people off, because I'd say the majority of main characters appear in two episodes max. Each episode usually covers one character going through a change, how they suffer consequences of their actions, and then moves on to another character. And because that next character has appeared in previous episodes, or was in the very first one, just in the background, some parts from other episodes will repeat from a new perspective in order to give some clarity to the audience, which I think very, very well connects the previous plot lines, while still making it feel like it is kind of an anthology series. The one problem with this plot structure, though, is that during the second half of the season, it is still creepy and it's still very creative, but it has a lot more time spent on characters explaining Boogie Pop's motivations and how it exists in the first place, and characters who appear in more than two episodes to hunt down Boogie Pop, they're not that very interesting, and they feel more simplistic than the other characters, which is kind of weird because they're in it a lot more. You'd expect them to have a little more depth to them. But the main woman who is tracking down Boogie Pop is just some stoic loner who thinks that she has no choice but to help the victims. And that's really about it. And this reporter who is helping her is not only very generic, but he's given a plot twist in the very final episode that I might have missed some clue or something like that, but it just made no sense to me. And another minor thing is that the last episode, while it is good at showing how some characters have recovered and have moved on from past episodes and may have even learned something, it just felt like a pointless epilogue that I didn't really think needed to explain everything, and on top of that, the last episode really stands out because 
as I mentioned, the animation is very vignette where there's a lot of reduced brightness or reduced saturation, but in the last episode, it's like a normal episode of any other anime show, and it really... It really doesn't feel as impactful as the other episodes. Overall, I really like Boogie Pop Phantom's plot structure because it stands out from other shows in that, while it does feel like an anthology series, it does connect together very nicely. And I really love the themes as to how some characters choose to escape from their lives as opposed to trying to face it heads on. And I love seeing the consequences of those actions. And on top of that, the animation looks very nice in how different and avant-garde it is. And for that reason, I'm going to give Boogie Pop Phantom a 4 out of 5. Guys, thanks as always for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, check out my other movie reviews and some of my other anime reviews on this channel. Thank you all so much for watching. Take care.